Okay, welcome to the north. I just got a really um, uh, important news alert on my media device. So we're talking monkey business because this is political finance and business finance. Knowing when to put your chips down and which ones to hold on to. Uh, in the Toronto Star, this also has to do with healthcare, and uh, you know I'll get to fabrics and why I'm wearing this. This is chefs and, and your 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 food your food servers and preparers are also essential workers out there. So let's support them as much as we can. Um, I'll do a video uh, to show why I'm dressed like this later. So subscribe if you want to see that. Um, it'll be a cooking video, of course. <clears throat> On with the news, because everybody's like, what? Health? Finance? Politics? What are you even talking about? Do you have proof? Uh, this is an article directly from the Toronto Star, uh, this morning on April 19th, 2020, and uh, written by Jamie Watt, a contributing columnist, this Sunday, April 19th. Uh, of all things underpinning our pre-COVID-19 lives that we pay little mind to, supply chains would have been at the top of the list, and for good reason. Parts were seamlessly delivered on a just-in-time basis to our factories. Shops were filled to the rafters with the latest fashions. Shelves were loaded with asparagus and fresh berries, even in the dead of winter. But if, as the song goes, you don't know what you got till it's gone, and the, the past few weeks have shown how little time it takes for, if not all of it, to be gone, at least for the cupboard to be bare. Initially, it was our reliance on Chinese goods that provided or proved problematic as the country's economic or economy shut down. Since then, China has rebounded, but at a cost. By leveraging its position as a vital supplier to the Western world, China has systematically strengthened its state power through commercial networks to manufacture and transport essential goods like medicines, and personal protective equipment. It's no surprise that President Xi has taken advantage of this crisis to maneuver China towards greater dominance. It is also no surprise just how successful China has been in disrupting supply chains and isolating countries like Canada along the way. To make matters worse, these moves come while our closest ally, the United States, seems intent on leaving us further isolated. Two weeks ago, in a move, uh, in a move Premier Ford declared totally unacceptable, U.S. officials halted the shipment of Ontario, to Ontario of 500,000 medical masks, that's half a million medical masks, from the manufacturer 3M. The proud maker of duct tape brand, duct tape. The situation was resolved by but the episode underscoring the frightening reality that Canada, with zero domestic capacity to produce N95 masks, was wholly dependent on a supply chain built on trust. So amidst this never-before-contemplated disruption, maybe it's time for a return to Made in Canada. Canada's manufacturing sector has been shrinking for decades as trade deals like NAFTA have taken effect and production has moved overseas. For a long time, this de decline has been characterized as the inevitable cost of globalization. But now, when Canada needs quick, reliable access to goods that we find more difficult than ever to acquire, we need to reconsider those assumptions. We must recognize that even setting aside COVID-19, the world has changed. Exhibit A, 
the 3M issue. It is simply inconceivable that President Bush or Obama, or any former president for that matter, would pressure an American company to withhold life-saving equipment from Canada. So too, the nature of Chinese power has changed the world. This week, the EU's competitor, or competition commissioner, Marguerite Vestager, explicitly urged members, or member governments to consider ownership stakes in European country, uh, companies whose tumbling stock market values may leave them susceptible to Chinese takeover during or after this pandemic. Canada's industries are equally susceptible to anti-competitive efforts by China or any other large business moguls. Conservative leadership candidate Aaron O'Toole has leapt on those trends. In a campaign video released this week, O'Toole called out corrupt foreign gov governments and incompetent global institutions like China and the World Health Organization which have left Canada to fend for itself. O'Toole solution? Buy, build, and grow Canadian. In the later half of the 20th century, Canada's economy was denationalized. Through the sale of Crown Corporation, like Petro Canada, CN Rail, and Air Canada, in the belief that the same public policy outcomes previously pursued through ownership could be achieved through regulation, but that time, at that time, both citizens and governments felt confident in the effectiveness of those regulatory policy tools. As our, leadership, as our leaders plan their long-term response to our latest economic catastrophe, already christened the Great Lockdown, it is worth asking whether they continue to have the same confidence uh, in those same policy tools. It is possible that Canada's response to long-term pro problems this crisis has exposed will rely not only on a new role for the private sector, but also a new relationship between public and private sector. As the last recession taught us, Government bailouts alone will not bring back Canadian manufacturing, nor will they bring us a supply chain, chain we can trust. That's something that will take all of us, government, business, and all Canadians, to do as the Prime Minister says, we are all in this together. And on... That uh, note, as we let some of that sink in, uh, this came from, uh, this was also uh, featuring a photo of uh, a worker inspecting masks at Calhoun Sportswear in St. Catharines, just a short distance from where I'm located in Niagara region and the sportswear uh, Calhoun sportswear has shifted its production into sewing masks to meet the need for the COVID pandemic and I'm in encouraging all Canadians all seamstresses and tailors alike anyone that can crochet knit or stitch a stitch and I've been asked by by this group donations only for the needy is their name and Patricia herself had given me this scrap of fabric because she wants me to ask any any artisans out there that want to get on to this movement of making made making products made in Canada again starting with our health care and not just our protective uh, health care measures but 
also um, in that article it had mentioned growing which is our farming industry which we can do a lot more with and you know a, a lot of these the, these areas where we are developing should be developed in responsible manners and not with these these same policies that we've been using over and over again <sighs> all that said I'm gonna get back to work on finding work and showing people how to cook on a minimalist budget um, not that that is my work but that is going to be my meal for the day so I will share that and uh, that's why I have this on which was also given to me by the woman that organizes the charity donation center who not only takes the donation uh, takes in the donations um, and and distributes those but she has also been working um, along care with uh, alongside with healthcare workers to provide them with meals and lunches um, that they can pick up on their breaks. Uh, you know, she just leaves them uh, uh, in the pickup spot, and uh, everyone just kind of um, anyone that really really needs help, uh, they're trying to help. Uh, and uh, look look around in your local areas for any any local groups that are motivating themselves and the rest of the community towards you know um bringing canada's equi uh, equitable equitable market and its manufacturing in canada back by using our our marketable skills and showing just what Canada can do. All right, thank you. This has been an update from the north, and I'll get back to my work. You, you get back to your work, and uh, anyone like me that needs to find proper paying work, get on networking to get that work. Um, Preferably from your own personal space. Most of those places are taking only online if they're open. Um, if not, then a lot of it will be backlogging and um, until manufacturing and, and business really starts to, to return to normal. So uh, stay healthy and uh, you know practice as, as much social distance as you can to reduce the spread. And um, anybody that wants to help make masks, um, I will be back with more details on the specifications for what they need to what what they need to look like. Thanks again.